And of course, man being what it is, we try. We, we think. We think. Now, the, 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 the moon isn't a great lump of rock. It's it's something that's trying to tell us something. So the first thing that we try we try to do was to see faces and things in the moon. And the, the, here are some of the things that people see in the moon. They see um, frogs, rabbits, men, old men, women. You know, all cultures all over the world have tried to try to interpret the surface of the moon. Some of it's quite difficult. I could never see a rabbit in the moon until I went to the southern hemisphere and I looked at the moon and in the southern hemisphere the moon is upside down and it, it's not really upside down, we are upside down relative to it and then I could, I, and I did this last year, I'd never done it before and I could suddenly see the rabbit's ears but you had, if you stood on your head in the northern hemisphere you, you wouldn't be able to see it as well. The sort of apogee of the madness, I think, came with the Apollo mission, which, I, don't get me wrong, I really loved. And I was around when they flew to the moon, <coughs> and, and I was very, very excited by it. But it would have been cheaper to have sent unmanned rockets to the moon and, and robot spacecraft to the moon. Putting a man there is, was unnecessary, but... A robot can't bring back magic, and I think that's what we were trying to do. We were trying, to, in, a, in a very sort of weird, loopy way, to fight the Cold War through magic. There was no logic to say, well, if we're on the moon, we'll be able to beat the Russians, or whatever it was the Americans were saying. But nevertheless, we wanted to do it, and we all got bound up in it, all of those that uh, us alive at the time. The total cost was about $150 billion, and we, took, and, and we retrieved 800 pounds of moon rock at a cost of, I think, $160 million a pound. It's the most expensive substance ever brought back to the Earth. Um, and that, that was the, uh, the Apollo missions. The magic, which we're, what I think we're trying to do, is dangerous. And the, the first Apollo mission, which never took off, experienced the, pure the, 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 the real danger of madness. They, they, they tried to test their rocket before setting it up by seeing what the systems would do once it was taken off the, once it was unplugged from the launch pad. They just wanted to see what would happen. And what happened was it blew up the, uh, the, uh, the atmosphere inside the, um, the, the command module was pure oxygen. They were surrounded by wires which weren't insulated, by plugs which weren't, weren't insulated. The potential for um, a fire was enormous and, that, and that's what happened, the fire broke out, the, the pressure inside the, um, inside the module got, got to about 27 pounds per square inch and they could hear the, 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 um, the astronauts screaming to be let out as they were burning to death. It was so constructed that you couldn't open the bloody thing until it, uh, you, you'd taken off something like 27 bolts and by the time they'd done that, 10 minutes had passed and that everybody inside was dead and their bodies were unrecognisable. So they paid a very big price. But I want to read you something which was written by Gus Grissom, who led the mission, <coughs> and this is an attempt to demonstrate to you how the madness had really got hold of him. He said, um, this is before, obviously before he died, if we die, we want people to accept it. We're in a risky business and we hope that if anything happens to us, it will not delay the programme. The conquest of space, space is worth the risk of life. So he's got an almost priest-like um, mission that, he, that he's on. So that was tragic and that, that became, all the other astronauts wanted to call that mission Apollo 1 and it came to be called Apollo 1 and eventually we did go to the moon and it was exciting and, uh, and, I, and I don't want to be a wet blanket about this because I'm as, I'm as excited as anybody else but with Apollo 11 which was led by Neil Armstrong and had um, Mike Collins and Buzz Aldrin on board and I had the real thrill the other day of uh, meeting Buzz Aldrin and interviewing him in the Royal Festival Hall and he said to me, oh Rick, I love your book. And I was, I was really, really pleased by that. Mm -hmm. he, somebody who'd actually been to the moon should, should be able to say that to me. Mars shuttle. Mm -hmm. um, I think what happened was people got bored actually. But I think it was very exciting with Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, mm -hmm. Michael Collins, Apollo 11, 
they apparently by Apollo 13, there were the viewing figures had dropped. It's only because they had this disaster on board that uh, the viewing figures went up. And people, you know, the, the, mine, the Cold War sort of fizzled out. Mm -hmm. People just weren't that interested. And, and the bleak truth about the moon is that, it's, in spite of everything I said, and I, and I believe in it, but the, the actual place is, is pretty barren and desolate. Thank you very, very much indeed. I've really enjoyed talking to you. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.